Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News and more drama ever since our last episode. Many of you guys heard about that as well. If you guys want to check that out on my channel, we have a video about there about some drama including Team Immortals members KNG, Lucas1, and Hen1 who apparently were out partying a bit late this past weekend at DreamHack Montreal. They were late to their semi-final matchup and had to forfeit map one of their final matchup as well. Kind of an event we haven't really seen too much in the past. Allegedly, according to CLG's coach Ryu, they were partying the night before and that's why they actually missed those events. I'll give you guys updates on that next episode as that kind of unveils itself. But more drama now in the female CSGO scene involving former Team Secret and now female Dynasty member that is actually Giuliano on screen for all of you. Many of you guys know I've had plenty of stories about Giuliano. I might be a bit biased towards her so I want to actually try to share this all, all this information with all of you guys with as little bias as possible and actually where this drama did start we were at a cross-border event this past weekend. There were several events going on. This was a CBE LAN event. There was actually a main event and a B LAN so pretty much if your team failed to qualify for the main event you could also qualify for the lower level one known as the B level LAN event and apparently Team uh, female dynasty, their, their lineup actually qualified for the B event after failing to qualify for the main one, and apparently part of their team actually went ahead and dodged the LAN event. Now, Giuliano on Twitter took to Twitter to actually defend herself, saying the team did not dodge. They only knew about the B event at the, at the night before, so they were kind of debating it, and there was actually internal issues and a little bit of a conflict there whether they wanted to go or not, but allegedly, according to Vilga, one of their other team members, she posted this on HLTV forums, where allegedly two of the five members actually left the night before, left the entire city, leaving their remaining players no choice but to forfeit their spot at the B event and so yes technically if you're signed up and you're expected to go to an event this does kind of count as a dodged event and according to Vilga it was actually Zaz and Giuliano two of the five members who decided to leave town and actually leave altogether the tournament before the next morning where they actually were going to play the tournament itself and that forced Vilga and the remaining two other girls to actually forfeit their matches and you can imagine what kind of internal issues this would cause inside the team who knows exactly why that was of course from a management standpoint probably not going to be looking too good as a manager of that team as of right now, Dynasty, or formerly of Team Secret, they were one of the better female CSGO lineups out there. And as of right now, some internal uh, kind of internal combustion going on. We'll see how that works out in the coming weeks. But this kind of escalated as well as other females out there in the CSGO pro scene got involved. We had Sophia, CSGO streamer, or formerly one. She actually got heavily involved, tweeting out many things about Giuliano and replying to many things. Eventually, Giuliano did block her, this kind of adding to the drama. And then she even threw down a, a tweet that I didn't expect at all. She threw down this tweet on screen for all of you, formerly, oh, actually, now of North, we have Valde who tweeted out this back in March of this year. He tweeted out this where apparently Zaz was making fun of FPL people for being bad and then he just tears her apart. At, really irrelevant to the event right now. I don't know why Sophie would tweet this, but I actually never knew that Valde was trashing on Zaz that poorly and yes of course he had some replies to that. Some very very savage replies. But on top of that, even more importantly guys, the overall main point here is apparently three of the five players, of course the majority of the team wanted to play the B event and now we have Zaz and Giuliano who allegedly, and we can pretty much confirm, they did decide to leave the night uh, the night before the actual uh, morning of the event and they decided to leave town and that forced their remaining players to actually forfeit those matches and of course we have plenty of other pro female players out there commenting about this saying how immature it is how much they fought to have these females actually participate in many CSGO events and the minute you actually get to, comp to compete and actually have a chance to participate you're now dodging events I'm not sure how I feel about this it does seem kind of somewhat unprofessional but I'm sure there's a lot of more internal stuff going on that we know about so I have reached out to Giuliano to figure out what actually happened inside the team what she what it went on between her and Zach and the rest of the members there and why they decided to leave the event before it went on. So hopefully the next few days, guys, she will be taking the live stream to explain to all of us what exactly happened there. Now on top of that, even more importantly, China, otherwise known as Perfect World, who is running CSGO in China right now, is continually doing things the right way, right? We have so many things coming over there. The Chinese Pro League, apparently Source 2 engines coming soon. Other things as well, they've done so well compared to Valve over here, the rest of the world wise. Uh, more things going their way as well. They have now announced officially the Chinese case opening rates. Now, they kind of did it conspicuously though. They also announced the same thing for Dota 2. They also run Dota 2 in the, inside the Chinese scene. For the Dota 2 post, you guys can see on screen, they released the exact percentages, but when it comes to CSGO, they made it kind of tricky. As you guys can read on screen, it's very poorly translated, but apparently they've actually released their rates inside of ratios. So when you guys go from mil spec to, of course, above that every single uh, you know tier of weaponry, they've actually compared them via ratio. So every ratio being one to five, blah, blah, blah. It's very, very hard to deter, but thanks to all of you guys out there, we pretty much know the basic rates. We've done the math. I'll put the math on screen for all of you guys right now a very generalized math but it's going to be pretty close to this on screen for all of you and the main thing we want to look at here is 80% of the time when you open a case 80% of the time and dang near near that you're going to get a blue skin and now even more rare than that is our stat track skin so you guys can see less than 1% chance to get a red skin and to get a knife don't ever expect one really it makes no it makes so much sense why now people open 300 400 cases and maybe only get one knife maybe get lucky maybe get two on top of that though think about this even further those rates I just showed you guys think about how much rarer it is to 
get a stat track knife and it really makes you think if these are the right odds which they certainly are after several case studies I've reviewed I reviewed several case studies ranging from 2,000 cases to 5,000 cases all the data really does compile right around to those rates guys it makes you think how many youtubers out there you've seen get very rare knives on multiple occasions and what valve has been doing now again this is just a conspiracy theory I know you guys are gonna get mad at me for this again I'm not I have no evidence towards this but wouldn't it make sense for valve every once in a while to find out your steam 64 ID and maybe think oh that's a big youtuber let's say anomaly for for instance let's give him a little bit tiny of an edge let's give him a chance to get more more knives because we know he'll make a video about it and make you guys open cases what if in the future we found out that valve was actually rigging these kind of things that would be insane I highly doubt it's happening but it is definitely a possibility and yes case rates are now out there guys and it pretty much means what we expected to see don't open cases it's never worth it and very last in today's episode of CSK news and very important as many hurricanes have been going on hitting Texas now allegedly Florida and maybe even Georgia as well thanks to wicked player I'll link his Twitter on screen as well as down below for all of you guys he's been tracking the hurricane heading towards Georgia or at least it might have been a few days ago as of right now we're not too sure on updates for that you guys can check out his Twitter but apparently one of Valve's HQs is actually located in Georgia uh, the main capital there of course Atlanta being so if you guys are in the southeastern region of US this actually could affect your CSGO gameplay so I'll post more of his tweets on screen for all of you so if the Valve HQ ever goes underwater or they're under torrential downpour or some kind of poor weather we could expect some downtime for some CSGO servers in the south southern portion of the United States so besides that nothing too much going to be affected by that but again prayers go out to all those people down there I know a lot of my viewers are from the south from Texas from Florida so prayers go out to you guys I know Texas was a, a terrible situation there uh, so we're going to see how it goes and hopefully everything does clear up in the next few days so as always hope you guys all enjoy these, these last few episodes of CSK News they have been so fun to make I will see you guys also again tomorrow with more episodes and uh, more stories coming your way so hope you guys all enjoyed thank you all for watching please leave a comment down below and as always I'll see you guys tomorrow and I'm gonna go all right